the grace of God. And then I, I had a little, the Holy Spirit kind of took me on a quick tangent. And last week, um, I just heard this while praying, while just, just getting ready. I just heard recover all. And so I wanted to do this series. I started a series last week about faith to, re well, the recovery. That's what I called it, the recovery. And in the beginning, I was like, okay, in order to recover, you're going to have to hear God. So we talked about how to hear from God. So if you, if you weren't privy to that, go back on the YouTube channel. You can go back and look at the past messages. I finished it on Tuesday. Well, Thursday, I kind of did. But I want to pick up in, um, today. And on Thursday night, um, I gave you all four ways to hear from God. Number one was the word of God. That the Bible even says we have a more sure word of prophecy, where God and his word are one. And he won't do anything apart from his word, okay? But then number two, and so there's some things you don't have to hear the inward voice or the inward witness, but you can just read it and see what God said. You ain't got to pray about what you can read and see clearly what he said about it. So there are certain things, and I understand we need to rightfully discern the word. We got to understand not how to take things out of context and all of those things. But one of the things was, okay, when you understand the word of God, you need to meditate on the word day and night to observe, to do according to all that's written therein. And he says, then you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. So he gave us the key to success was meditating on his word and do what we get when we meditate on. Because see, when you meditate, you open up your heart to hear from God. Because you can be reading one thing and while you're reading it, something drops on the inside of you to say, okay, I want you to do this. Okay, so that, that's, that's number one. Number two was the inward witness. The inward witness comes from your born again human spirit. When you get born again, your spirit comes alive unto God. You're born again, you're alive. You now go from death to life. You go from separation to connection with God. And so now out of, uh, what is it, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, it says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. So this is done by the work of the Holy Spirit when you get born again, okay? And so now that you're alive unto God, there's this inward prompting, inward knowing that you can have about situations. That when you're going through things, it's almost like your inward conscious. Your conscious is the voice of your spirit. It's almost like sometimes we feel like, you know what? It's just something in me telling me to do this. I just feel like I need to go this way. There's a perception. You know, a lot of times in society, we always heard that women have this intuition. But don't you know men have the same intuition? Because we are all have a spirit. It's just the fact that a lot of times women have tend to listen more to what's going on in than men. There are things I pick up on just like my wife pick up on it. Why? Because I've trained myself to listen to what's going on on the inside. There were times, even my children to tell you, I remember this one time, I always, I laugh at this, this particular situation. They were in middle school, and I'm sitting in the car, and this was more their inward voice, but I, I was sitting in the car, and I heard this on the inside. Talk to your girls about X, Y, Z, because they've been doing this, and tell them why it's wrong to do it, but don't get mad at them. Explain to them. The minute they got in the car, I said, have y'all been, and I told them, and they both, you could have bought them for a penny, but the, the, the look on their faces when I said that, I said, don't forget I told you, your mom and daddy hear from God. I said, he telling us that this is what you've been. And he said, this is why it's wrong to do it. See, this is supernatural parenting. Amen. And so now when you learn, you can, you can pick up on things. It's like, you know, everything can look good, but on the inside, it's like something just ain't sitting right with me. Trust that. So you got to trust that inward witness. You got to trust that inward knowing. Number three is the inward voice. The inward voice is more authoritative. That's the Holy Spirit telling you something, speaking to your spirit, because God communicates to us spirit to spirit. See, Satan can communicate to your senses. He operates in the sense realm. So he can speak things to your mind and make it look like it's God saying it. But if you can't, if you don't discern it properly, you'll think you're doing something for God and it ain't God at all. 
Because Satan can use your heart to do right against you. I remember an elder told me this years ago. Okay, let me, let me, let me explain, let me explain, let me explain. Um, I didn't mean to get too much in this, but since I'm here. Um, my wife and I, when we got married, um, we both came up in households, and there was different things we saw in the households. Sometimes we saw arguments, we saw things. And so, you know, we said that, okay, we ain't going to do that. You know, we made a decision. We ain't going to argue in front of the kids. That, that lasted for a few years. I don't know how much longer it lasted after that. But, <laughs> but, but I remember my heart was to do, was to treat her right. Okay, and that's a good thing. I should, as, my, as a husband, want to treat my wife right and make sure that she feel good and she taken care of and all this stuff. The problem was there may have been decisions. Look, she's looking like, okay, what are you getting ready to say? No, that, well, you know, you heard me say this for years. So the problem was there were sometimes decisions that when we discussed what we needed to do, on the inside, I knew what we needed to do, but what she shared was opposite to what I was getting on the inside. So I had a decision to make. Would I allow my desire to please her override the wisdom that was in me? And knowing that whenever, not saying that, I'm, I'm just using this, not saying that she made bad choices all the time, but there were certain cases where she was like, okay, I want to do this. I think we should do this. But it's like, nah, if we do this, I knew, I saw the whole scenario. I knew exactly what would go wrong, how it would go wrong. And every time I violated what was in me, chaos ensued. Because wisdom violated is chaos created. When you wisdom violated is chaos created. Whenever you violate the wisdom that God drops in your spirit, something ain't going right. You go look at the house. You ready to buy a house. You believe in God. You praying. You praying in the spirit. You praying. Shata la 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 basa. Come outside and tie my tie. You listen. You, you sowing seed. You declaring the word. But, and you see the house. This your dream house. It got everything you want in it. But on the inside, something just like, huh. Am I going to allow my desire to override what's in me? Because your desire can drown out that wisdom. Because you want it so bad. And don't even realize, is it out of the season of God, the timing of God? Is this the right property? Not even knowing in some cases you may be getting ready to buy a lemon and don't even know it. See, right? <laughs> Amen. Been there, done that. See, in the inward voice, that more authoritative voice, there was a time I remember, I remember the day. I remember where I was on the street. I remember the intersection I was. I was headed to do something I ain't had no business doing. And the Holy Ghost on the inside, that was the closest thing to an audible voice I'd ever heard. The Holy Ghost said, don't go. And I violated. And dealt with condemnation for two years. Off of one act. Satan kicked my tail in my mind. And I remember I talked to a man of God. I got to get a shout out to my boy, Pastor Calvin Duncan, because we were in youth ministry together. And I just and I shared what was on my heart. And he was like, bro, man, he said, you got to let that go. The reason why is because I was so, I, my conscience was so tender that anything that violated my belief system it wrecked me because I didn't want my testimony tainted in any way before people. And, but I'm, I'm here to tell you this. Even if you mess up in any area, the grace and the goodness of God is there for you. See, the grace makes up and fills the gap where we screw up. See, when I begin to learn that I'm the righteousness of God, even if I do something that's unrighteous, it does not unravel my righteousness.
When I learned that, see, for people that come against the grace message and say, you know, if you preach that too much, you're going to give people the license to sin. Uh Uh-uh, people sinning anyway. You do what you want to do because you want to do it. Once you understand it, it brings you out of it. Okay, okay, I don't mean to get into all that. Then number four, fourth way to hear from God. I'm just going over this before I get to it. I'm going to deal with it real quick. I'm not, I promise I ain't going to keep you long. That's why I got my time. It's through prophecy and spiritual gifts. I didn't spend the time here that I wanted to on Thursday because this is one of the biggest areas I see people making mistakes. Because this generation, I've seen that they have such a strong desire to hear from God that they're willing to listen to any and everybody that sounds like God. And if I can train you how to hear his voice, it'll help you to cut through the people that ain't of God. See, when that inward witness and inward prompting is working, it it happened with Paul. It was um, in the book of Acts. It was the seven sons of Sceva. And these are professional exorcists, and they were casting out devils and stuff. And Paul, um, was it? I don't know if it was Paul and Silas. I don't know who, who it was with them. But they were traveling and they were ministering. And this woman would follow them. She was a soothsayer. And she would say, these are the men of God. Listen to them. And this she did many days, the Bible said. Now watch this. What she said was right. So if you just looked at it at face value without any discernment, it's like, what is wrong with what she's saying? But then after many days, the Bible says on a particular day, Paul perceived something ain't right here. And he cast the devil out of that woman. And so, but wait a minute. He heard her many days, but this one particular day, something kicked in. See, I've been there. I remember this one time we had this youth event years ago, years ago. Somebody said years ago. Years ago, years ago. (laughs) And there was this one young lady who came up, and we had this big event we would have it on um, Friday nights and stuff, and and people would come from all over the city. And she came up and she gave a word. I remember you pastor came up and said, man, what you think about that? I said, you know, what you said was good. Now, I really didn't tell him how I was really feeling. How I was really feeling was like something ain't right. But I didn't want to speak negatively about the young lady. I just was like, okay, it seemed like what she said didn't harm anything. But at the same time, the spirit behind it just wasn't right. What I was sensing was you were doing this for show to draw attention to you. Whenever you functioning in the spirit, it always gives glory to Jesus. It brings no glory to you. That's one of the ways you know a thing is by the Spirit of God. And you know, you, you, you can pick up, you, y'all, y'all picked up on these things with people. You can pick up, it's like, okay, I don't know, they're doing all the smiling, they're saying all the right words. What is it with them? I don't, and it's not like you're trying to judge, but you just can't help what you see. Y- y- y'all, y'all been there, you, you with me, fam? So some stuff is like, okay, God, okay, now what do I do with that? Sometimes it's the, it's the key. And the wisdom that God gives you to know how to function in those areas. Sometimes God just alerts you for you to be aware and proceed with caution. Sometimes it's when you ask God, what do you want me to do with what you're showing me? He may say, hold up for a second. Something else is going to come up that's going to add to what you just got. And the answer will come. So when you when you are in those areas, I want you to be mindful. And even when you're talking about prophetic words, if a prophecy. okay, let me share this. I got to say this. The office of the prophet and I function in that office. I function as a pastor and God has graced me to be a pastor for this time. But my my main gifting is the office of the prophet. And with an office comes certain spiritual gifts that function on a regular basis. That's how I can say this over the years it has been proven. Okay? 
And I also function in the office of a teacher. As I begin to teach and begin to share the word of God. Now, the, the interesting thing is this. When perfect the office of the prophet in the old covenant, and now there was a man of God where the Lord Jesus appeared to him several years ago in the 1950s. And Jesus began to teach him about the different ministry gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And when he got to him, to him about the office of the prophet, he taught him this. And he says, I want you to go teach my people what I've shown you. He says the office of the prophet under the Old Covenant, Old Testament, does not function the same way under the New Testament. You want to know why? One of the reasons is this. Under the Old Covenant, people were directed by the office of the prophet to do X, Y, Z. Thus saith the Lord, this, this, and this. Under this new dispensation, that now that we're born again, we have God's nature abiding on the inside of us. And the primary way he will speak to us is spirit to spirit to you directly. Now, I can come and share a prophetic word, but it must confirm what's already in you. If it does, I say this for myself. If what I tell you don't, does not confirm what's in you, forget it. Sit it on the shelf. It may come later. I may have just missed it and I can miss it. We are human. Sometimes we can, I, I've reduced the missing over the years by being, being mindful and not just, in the past, I used to feel like I used to have to perform. That whenever I showed up, I needed to have a word for people because that's what they were expecting from me. And if I didn't demonstrate or perform, then, oh, it was a waste. They were disappointed. And I had to begin. Even when I was getting ready to teach this today, I'm like, God, I'm going to teach your word. Because you need to fall in love with his word first. It will save you. If you keep seeking signs, even Jesus said a wicked and a perverse generation seeks signs all the time. It could be people who come to visit. And I know sometimes people may tell them, hey, you come, this dude be on point. He, he'll prophesy. He been hitting this. Oh, man, let me come check this out. Okay, that's cool. But I'm not going to just prophesy on cue just to appease you. I'm going to teach. If the Holy Ghost don't give me nothing, I ain't making up nothing. And out of me teaching the word, see, this protects you. I'm telling you, I have seen this so much in this generation. I thank God he raised me the way. And I believe he has commanded me to be one of the voices to help teach and to train. Because there's been a disconnect from those the generation prior to this generation now. And I believe I'm one of the bridge builders. This is what God has just dealt with me about. I've been in there in these, these atmospheres of the anointing and the power of God. I've learned how to flow and function in the spirit. But I've also learned that so many times people are looking for the spectacular and totally miss the supernatural. See, the supernatural is God's ability manifesting on your ability to do what you could not do in your ability. It's above your normal and your natural. And sometimes what's supernatural doesn't always look spectacular. See, it's supernatural for you to endure a situation until turnaround comes. Not even realizing that the spirit of might is at work in you, in your inward man to strengthen you. And you trying to figure out how in the world can I go through this and not lose my mind, not break under pressure. And this God said, that's been me at work in you the whole time. And you've been praying, God, bring something, call something to happen. He says, I have been. I've been strengthening you while you've been going through the process, while you've been in the cooker. And I've been getting stuff out of you for the calling that I have for you. And you're trying to figure out, God, how come you ain't show up yet? He says, I've been showing up. You just didn't recognize me. Because you're waiting for the spectacular moment. While the supernatural has been at work the whole time. Some of you are right on track and don't even realize it because you're too busy looking at other people. Get off the ground. Stop judging your life off of a curve based off of somebody else's happiness, which they post. They only show you a fraction. OK, I'm going to share things without sharing things. I've been in this business for a minute. It's going on 25 years in spirit field ministry. I started at a young age. And I've counseled many of people. 
Sometimes people don't even realize the folk out in council. That they come to me from other churches, other places, pastors themselves, all of that stuff. And one thing you got to realize, everything that glitter ain't gold, baby. See, this is why, because, okay, okay, let me, because a person can walk in great gifts, but no character. See, this is why we walk in the, if we walk in the fruit of the Spirit, that should be our focus, then the gifts of the Spirit manifest easier. I'd rather you learn how to be nice than, you know, amen. All right, so the way God speaks, so now, when, when a prophetic voice comes and starts prophesying to you, if you feel something on the inside that just don't set right with what they're saying, forget it. Forget it. Put it on the shelf. There are many people who do it because they get into manipulation. And if you don't watch it, you can get into, I really didn't want to get here, but since I'm here, I got to make sure I tie it up properly before I move on. <sighs> Satan can operate in the sense realm. And there's a thing called familiar spirits. Familiar spirits are familiar with the characteristics and attributes of people. And so just because somebody can come out and call out your phone number and your house number does not always mean that it is of the spirit of God. And you got to watch stuff. And if now a person who does that is doing that to manipulate to get something out of you. Mm -mm. Why am I getting on this? Okay. I go, okay, I got to deal with. So you got to use wisdom. So if I trust the word because the spirit and the word agree, let me first go to the word to see, God, do you answer something in your word that I'm dealing with right now? Is there an answer? Because there are some answers I know that you can't clearly go into the word and see how you need to handle it, per se. Hear me what I'm talking about. Okay, the job you're supposed to take. The house you're supposed to buy. The person you're supposed to marry. There's no scripture that says, John, thus say of the Lord, you're supposed to marry Mary on this day at this time. So, okay, so you got to depend on your de the, the, the development of your spirit, the common sense God has given you, because he's given us a brain to think. People think intellect is not spiritual. It is one, one of the most spiritual things you can do is to think. Stop being so deep that you dumb deep. You off the pages. It's like, come on. Come on now. It's like, if it looked like a duck, talk like a duck. I ain't got to, listen, there was things I ain't had to be born again to pick up on and see about people. You just got street knowledge and you know, yo, watch out for them. He running game on you. This, this is what he doing. He's setting you up by doing this, 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 and he probably going to say this next. How you know that? Because I'm a dude. <laughs> it's just that simple. Is the Lord showing you something? Okay. And see, as a person who functions in these giftings, I, I, I think it would be irresponsible for me not to share these with you. There was a well-known man of God. If I said his name, you would know exactly who he is. God is using him. When we were in Atlanta, we had some friends that brought him over to our house. This was before he really blew up and anybody knew him. I knew once he came over, it's like, okay, Lord, what you want me to share with him? I already knew the setup. You already knew when God's setting up stuff. And I mean, I just began to prophesy. Then some stuff I had to whisper in his ear so everybody else wouldn't hear what was happening. He was like, oh my God, man, who in the world are you? Where did you come from? Because God was calling him on the carpet about stuff he was dealing with in private. But he also began to prophesy about his future. And everything, and my wife would tell you, has come to pass. And to just sit back and see it is like, praise God. Thank you, Lord, that you're working in this brother's life. And he even began to share publicly some of the stuff that I saw back then, privately. I said, okay, Lord, I'm just obeying you. You're telling me to do this. But, but this is the point I want to get to. After we finished talking, we had some food and, you know, we were giving everybody something to eat. And I said something to him. I was like, bro, man, we need to connect because, um, you know, do some stuff in the future, blah, blah, blah. He was like, man, anything you want. The Holy Ghost, I kid you not, 
He arrested me so strong and said, don't you dare ask him for nothing. He is sensitive and he is vulnerable right now. And he'll say yes to anything you ask him right now. I said, yes, sir. And I told him, I said, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Because I ain't violating the Holy Ghost. I'm no, that's my boss. I know. I know better than that. I need this anointing to stay fresh on me. I need to stay. I need to be keen in the spirit for things we got to do. And I was like, I cannot disrupt this thing. And so there are people who do that, who take advantage of people because they're in a vulnerable state. And this is why we, we need for you to be so developed in the spirit and to know how to hear from God for yourself that you don't fall for this stuff. My brother was at a, a meeting with somebody, my older brother, and this guy, I don't know if he said he was a prophet or what. He was going around laying hands on people. When he came to my brother, my brother said, nope. Can't lay hands on me. I think it threw the dude. So it was like, okay, nobody's ever spoken up because he know he's been trained. I'm not just letting any old person lay their hands on me, transfer nothing in my life. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Go. On. See, this is why I got to be right before God in the sense of I know. The righteousness of God has made me right before God, but we still have to live a life that's pleasing unto God. So I don't mess up stuff. Okay, I did not mean to go here and be here this long. Lord, y'all stop asking questions. Okay. Lord, I, goodness. See, now I'm going to have to teach this next week, but those are the day of next week. Man. Okay. I'm like, okay, where well, I'm going from here, Lord? What, what, what you want me to do? Because I'm looking at my time. I'll go get, I got about 10 minutes left. And I'm like, oh, I, well, I can at least start. Let me at least start. What I really wanted to talk to you today about was faith for recovery and faith to build. Because I want to make this statement. Any person can win in life no matter what hand they've been dealt. I know some, listen, I'm not saying that the Holy Ghost is telling me this. I just know the percentages and the odds. There has to be somebody in here that is thinking about, God, where do I go from here in my life? What do you want me to do? I feel like I'm at a pivot. I've been cool up to this point, but I just sense there's something. I can't fully explain it, but I just know in my heart that God, I'm at a crossroads now. And it's always like, do I go right or do I go left? And God is saying, yes. Let me help you. Let me help you. Whatever you do, the scripture says, do it heartily as unto the Lord. And I'll ask this question, what's easier to move, a car that's still or one that's moving? One that's moving. And as you do it out of the integrity of your heart, if God needs to redirect you, he will. But if he has not caught, spoken something specific, what is it that you've been thinking about? What is it that's been in your heart? What is it that you could not shake? What is it that's just really, you know, whether it's the book you're supposed to write, the podcast you're supposed to start, the thing you're supposed to do, the designs you're supposed to, whatever it is, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord and he will direct your every step and you will arrive at your destination good life. I'm going to read real quick Romans chapter 4, verses 17 through 21. Romans 4, 17 through 21. <laughs> I hadn't said this in years. Somebody shout good life. <laughs> I did a message years ago. Destination good life. See, in the book of Ephesians 2 and 10, it says, You are God's handiwork. You are his workmanship, created unto Jesus Christ, unto good works, that, Christ, that God has before ordained. He says, watch this. God has created a prearranged path in, for your life, and in that path is the good life. Everybody in here has a path 
and your path leads to your good life. God doing something in you. Now, this is what's kicking in now. I already knew as I started teaching that the anointing would kick in and he would have some things to share with some people. You are on track. And I'm going to speak this to the Flemings. You are on track and you are on better course than you even realize. You are on the right path. Just keep going. There are going to be landmarks that you see along the way. There are going to be people that you meet along the way. Because you have just submitted yourself to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, to the leading of God, he will give you wisdom, he'll give you resources, he'll expand your territory, and you just need to be flexible and open. That whenever he wants you to go right, you go right. Whenever he wants you to go left, you go left. You are not boxed in. You are free to do what he's telling you to do. And watch, it's going to manifest. Everything you're believing for is going to manifest in the timing. To everything, there's a season. I've seen this with couples that have been believing for children. I mean, for years. And I remember one couple, it was like, when something manifested, and I told my wife, I said, the child's going to come now. Sure enough, right? Not too long after that, the announcement came. I said, because it was certain things. Sometimes you don't know what God is working. He's the master air traffic controlman. He tells one plane to land and when the other to take off. Because he knows everything. And he does not want your path to coincide with somebody else's path that might cause injury. And so sometimes you don't know why God is holding you back. And it's because somebody else is in your way. And if you collide at a certain time, it's going to mess something up. And so sometimes that closed door was God's goodness. I know you declare all open doors, but some doors that's closed were supposed to be closed. And don't you try to kick, door in, kick open any door that has been closed. I'm not, hear me, see, now this is why I got to go back and explain that. Because sometimes it depends on how a person hears it. So now that doesn't mean when you hear a no, don't keep pursuing. If you know God told you to do something, don't just take the no if you know that God said pursue this. Because it just may be that person is not your yes, but your, oh Lord, your favor is going to show up with the people you need to do business with. So if you don't have favor here, but you have favor there, God is already showing you, this is who I want you to work with. You can, I'm trying, okay. I'm, come on, Lord. <laughs> because we try sometimes, we have a passion to do something. We want it a certain way. And God is saying, no. And then we like, I don't want it, I want it. No, no, no. <laughs> Settle down. While you having a tantrum, chill. I'm protecting you. You thought he was the one. You did not know what he was secretly struggling with, which would have caused damage in your marriage and your relationship. And he says, I was not going to bring a child into that environment. You better... I'm going to get deep with some, I'm going to walk heavy with some stuff now with you. Y'all ready? Because I'm talking to people online. It's what God knows what you need better than you do. Lord, I receive it. How are going? I know, see, you, all right, Holy Ghost, I see, now you're messing with me now too. Even when it comes to what you're stretching and releasing your faith for, God may show up and say, you thinking too small. You counted out what I can do without even consulting me. I just want to let that one sit for a second. Because he said, this is a time of acceleration and I'm going to stretch you for what I want you to do. And you need to be ready for it. Because don't forget, your acceleration may come in the form of the help that I'm sending your way for the escorts that I'm going to give you to escort you into your new season. 
So I need you to be open to the wisdom. Where God guides, he provides. And when he guides you to certain people to talk to certain people to get certain wisdom, you need to be ready to receive the wisdom that they have to offer because he wouldn't have sent you to them if they didn't have what you needed. That can help somebody right there. Like, I feel like you're the person I'm supposed to talk to, but then when they start mapping out what you need to do, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I don't, that's too much. That's too much like work. Too much like discipline. God, I just want you to show up. Because we shout with acceleration. Speed up, Lord. I, listen, I could go and turn this place out and start just preaching and prophesying. And y'all be ready. Be ready to fall out. Be ready. But stop. When the anointing lifts and you go home and God said, clean up your house because if you're not being faithful over the little, I'm not going to put you in something greater that you're only going to tear up. No, oh, that's too much. I don't want all that. No, no. When God told me, and my wife would tell you, when we, he was dealing with both of us before he connected us, he started telling her, she was wearing, like, you was wearing, like, contact lenses, all this. He was telling her to start changing things about her. He told her, I'm, now, I'm not lying when he said, but he said, take out the contacts because he's going to love your eyes the way that they are. And that was one of the first things I noticed about her were her eyes. He's like, oh. <laughs> but watch this. He started telling her to change even some of her attire, and I noticed it. I'm like, and I, I won't in the spirit, fellas. I was like, when I saw her and she was had some on, my first thought was, mm. I'm like, okay, let me, I don't want to get caught up in no lust or nothing. I'm like, let me, help me, Lord. I'm trying, I'm working on my own stuff. I'm like, Jesus. I remember this check it outfit she has. I just remember, I just remember. Lord Jesus. Shata, Shaka Zulu, Shaka Khan. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So, <laughs> but all of a sudden, God began to work. He started telling me stuff about my room was filthy at home. I, I was still living with my parents at the time. I was in my rare early 20s. And he said, the Holy Ghost would not let me go to sleep with one item of clothing on the floor at all. The room had to be pristine. Part of what he was telling me was, I'm getting you ready. He would tell me stuff like, well, one time, I want you to, he said, I want you to fast from television. I don't want you to watch any TV. I forgot how long it was. And it was like, I want to be the first person you talk to when you get up, last one you talk to before you go to sleep. And I became so sensitive in the spirit during this time. God was getting stuff out of me because he said, you cannot take this into your marriage. Because I was believing him for my wife. I said, I'm ready to get married. Now, Lord, I'm living for you. And, you know, I've been a cool dude. Like, I'm, I'm, I ain't out here hoeing around none of this stuff. I'm serving you. I'm ready. I told him, I was like, I'm ready. And God knew. He said, let me go ahead and get this boy somebody <laughs> real quick. But he knew for the calling. So when God starts leading you in things, don't negate the small instruction because it may be setting you up for the big commotion. Be ready. Because you're going to hear some stuff. Some of you done already heard. You just got to stick with it. And stay there and be committed long enough. I, I, I'm going to have to do it. I'll just teach on the rest of it next week. I'm just going to have to do it because I'm out of time. But I'm going I'm to I'm I'm close with this. What was I going to say? Look, oh, I just had to thought. The small instruction. Oh, man. Right, it's setting you up for the big promotion. Hmm? 
Committed, committed. Thank you. You got to be committed to the process. We have this confession for favor. And part of it is supernatural turnarounds and miraculous breakthroughs in the midst of great impossibilities. You need to be strengthened for a supernatural turnaround. Sometimes your supernatural turnaround is God giving you the strength and the patience to endure the process you're going through until your breakthrough comes. And so now you're at peace, but you're committed to doing everything you need to do, everything he's instructing you on a daily basis. And before you know it, boom. We're waiting for the grand moment and we're missing the small instructions along the way. And if you commit to hearing the small instructions, it's getting you ready for your grand entrance. You're believing for brand new, but haven't mastered your passions yet. And he's telling you to master that so you can handle this. Because if I put you there too soon, it will wreck you. And I love you too much to mess up your life and anybody else's life you're about to come in contact with. See, this one, when preachers and pastors talk about, I'm ready to go start a church. Did God tell you, I'm just ready to do it. See, you ain't ready. Most guys I know that was starting the ministry didn't even want to do it. God had to almost force them to do it. Because you don't know what come with it. I say, yeah, you, you, too, you too anxious. Oh, yeah. You, so nine times out of ten, you're going to do something to manipulate to get what you want. Oh, I just sit back and watch some folks. I was like, why? I'm, 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 I ain't saying nothing to nobody. And I just sit back and watch people. And I'm saying, this is getting ready to happen, this is getting ready to happen. I'm like, wow. It's like a screen playing before me. And this is why I want to help people and say, I'm here to add value to you. That's all I'm here to do today, is to add value to your life and to help you make wise choices and decisions so that when you go out now and y'all come together and pray for husbands and wives that need to come together and pray. If you find an agreement partner, somebody to come in agreement with you for something and say, this is what I'm believing for. And I need you to keep me accountable while I'm doing this. What is God showing you? What is he telling you to do? And get ready for it because this is your time and this is your season. Your season has, I believe I'm hearing this. Your season has already arrived. He says, I just need you to have the wisdom to handle it, man. All of y'all are at different stages in your life. I don't know who, who every, what everything is for, who everything is for, but all I can say is this. Some people, is some small instructions that will reap tremendous results. Some of you have already been given instructions. You just need to obey the instructions. Some is like, okay, I haven't heard the instruction yet, so be still until you hear the instruction. And whatever you can do, everything starts in the natural. So whatever you can do natural that does not violate spiritual principles, then you can do that. Okay, let, let, me, let me, okay, if you know that you believe in, say, okay, I always use this as a practical thing, natural thing. You believe in for a house. Okay, I don't have to have God tell me to research. Let me find out interest rates. Let me find out the type of house. Let me find out things, da, da, da. Okay, God, do you want me to pay for it with a loan? Do you want me to go ahead and believe you cash? Do you want me to do this? Now, if you give me instruction, I'll follow your instruction. But if you give me none, what can I do that does not violate integrity and is as far as I can go until I get further instruction? I've gone as far as I can. Now, God, I'm trusting you now. I think that could help somebody right there. I hope, I hope they help somebody. All right. Glory to God. You see, man, this is what I was talking about earlier. Remember the last two services we had? Power show up. Laying hands on everybody. Everybody on the floor. God said, ain't time for that today. They need instruction. The instruction is going to do something for them because you cannot violate... See, we want to use God to, to override our lack of discipline. <laughs> you can't do that. You still going to have to be disciplined. You still going to have to live right. 
you still going to have to stop being mean and learn how to walk in love. You can't keep gossiping about people and being nasty to folk. And then with the same mouth say, Lord, bless me indeed. Even though the blessing is already on you, it won't manifest to its full potential until you deal with some heart issues. And the hardest thing you got to do is going to be your greatest breakthrough. Been there, done that. I, the thought of it is always worse than the actual act. It, it's just the thought of it. But once you break through it, it's like, man, it's not as hard as I thought it would be. And God's like, I'm proud of you. Now you're ready. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you glory for this time. I pray right now for the instructions for your people, that we are open to hear from you. Holy Spirit, you are the miracle worker. You are the one here with us in the earth to show us what to do, to lead us, guide us, show us things to come. So we ask that you open up our eyes to see and our ears to hear. Give us wisdom to know what to do and how to do it. And for the strength to endure until change comes. And so, Father, we give you the praise and give you the glory for it and the honor in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we just bless you and we thank you. Is there any person under the sound of my voice, whether in person or online, has never made Jesus the Lord of their life? I ask that you speak to their heart. Let them know that there is a no-so salvation. There is a literal heaven to gain and a hell to shine. And so we bless you and we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. As every head is still bowed, every eye is still closed, not only am I speaking to those in person, but also those online. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you never confessed him. The Bible declares that if you confess Jesus before men, he'll profess you before the angels of God. And that he that believes on the Lord shall not be ashamed. If that's you today, if you've never given your life to the Lord, you say, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus today. I want to commit my life to him. As every head is bowed, every eye is closed. I just want you to slip up your hand real quick if that's you and I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Okay. Glory to God. Secondly, there may be somebody here that may say, okay, I'm born again and I know it. And I have eternal life, but I've been lacking power in my life. I've heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. And I know there's something about this. And so right now, I want to receive the Holy Spirit today. I want to begin to walk with him. I want to begin to talk with him. I want to begin to fellowship with him. And so now, listen, after salvation, this is the greatest experience you can have. Because the Bible talks about power that you will receive. And so the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, will come to dwell in you, live in you, come upon you, and to help you transform and change your life. If that's you and you say, I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit, but I want to today. I just want you to slip up your hand right now if that's you and I'll pray with you. Last but not least, and there may be somebody online. So as we have online, if there's anybody that's coming online, just let me know. There may be somebody that you don't have a church home. Um, and it's a place that God is leading, guiding you, and directing you. You know what I feel and I sense the spirit of this ministry. I want to connect with this ministry, um, and I want to become a member of Spirit of Fire Fellowship. We want to give you that opportunity today, um, even as you're here. So if that's you and God is leading, guiding, or prompting, or directing you, I just want you to slip up your hand real quick if that's you. Last. Now, there may be somebody here as well that you say, you know what, Pastor? I just want you to come into agreement with me about some things that's happening, that's going on. And I just want to do this, even while you're just sitting there in your seat, while you're sitting there in your seat, while you're online, God wants to do something transformative in your life. He's like, there's something that I'm believing that God is leading, directing me to do, but I'm believing right now for the wisdom, the empowerment to get it done. If that's you, I want you to slip up your hand. I'm just going to pray over you. I see you. I'm just going to pray over you. Now, as every head is still bowed, every eye is still closed, I won't take long at all to pray this prayer. As I'm praying, for those that pray in the Spirit, I just want you to pray in the Spirit online as well. I want you to be in agreement with us here. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the endowment of power, the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that our sister needs to endeavor to do the thing that you call and created her to do. Thank you right now that you begin to open doors that no man can shut that you begin right now to bring people that will use their power, resources, and influence to assist her and to help her in getting accomplished what you call for her to do. And so we declare and decree, we surround her with faith and love to get the job done. We thank you, Father, for the proper timing that you will give her the prompting, the knowing, and the understanding as to the season that she's currently in and what you're taking her into. So we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you honor for it now. In Jesus' name, 
Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, at this time, it is first Sunday and a um, little past time, but um, we have passed out communion elements. And so we want to honor God and honor his, the Lord's Supper and the Lord's Table by partaking of communion. You don't have to be a member of Spirit of Fire to do this, but really you just need to be a believer on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the scripture says you don't want to partake in an unworthily manner, in meaning not discerning or rightfully knowing the Lord's body. We understand that the, the bread or the wafer represents the Lord's body, which was broken for us. Uh, with the cat of nine tails, he was given 39 stripes. And even this was something that I learned some years ago, that there was this point that doctors had even concluded that there were 39 categories of diseases that all other diseases fell from. And I was like, wow, that Jesus took care of every sickness that would ever come. Anything that would ever happen to your body, he has already taken it on his body and has given us his healing for the sickness and disease. And so now we can by faith say, I am the healed, protecting my health from sickness and disease. And so anytime anything comes to attack your body, it is in violation of the covenant that God has given you. That by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. I want y'all to say that, say, in the name of Jesus, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. I am healthy and I am whole. Every disease, germ, virus, bad bacteria that touches my body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. And say, body, you will function in the perfection of which God created you to function. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to exercise. So for those, if there's anyone that does not have a cup, a communion element, if you raise your hand, everybody has one? Okay, cool. All right, we're going to do this together. The Bible declares this. Jesus said it like this. As often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. He says, this is my body, which was broken for you. As often as you take it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Let's see. The Bible also declares after the same manner, Jesus also took the cup and when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink it, I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Let's drink. Amen. Praise God. Well, at this time, we want to honor God in our giving. We like to call it opportunity for prosperity time where uh, we still digital platform as well as in person, but if you desire, if you need an envelope, I believe that this is a time of worship, that as we honor God and our giving and honor him with the fruit of our substance, that as God has prospered us, we want to honor him with the seed. We want to honor him in our giving. So if that's you and you need an envelope, if you have something that you want to sow, I mean, that you would need an envelope, you can raise your hands. Um, if not, you can also go on Cash App, Spirit of Fire Fellowship, if you desire to sow that way. Uh, I believe we have Venmo, text by giving. For those online, you'll see it. There's a QR code um, that's coming up on your screen where you can scan that code and it'll take you to a secure page on our website at spiritoffire.us, and you can sow there. Uh, we don't sell your information to third parties, do any of that kind of stuff. Um, it is secure, and you can give as you see fit. And so we pray for multiplication and increase. We pray for the hundredfold return on your giving. And so we want to honor God in our giving. And I'm, I'm going to be doing a teaching soon, dealing with the tithe and dealing with under tithing under grace. What does that mean? Um, there, <laughs> there's been a lot of controversy lately that's been going on about it. And even my pastor began to teach on, and I was um, having to be privy to be at one of the conferences and we were dealing with some things. And so I want to take some time to really teach on it and show what the Bible says uh, concerning it. Go line upon line and precept upon precept. And God wants us blessed. Giving, listen, we know that God wants us to be generous. God is a generous God. For God so loved that he gave. And so we want to understand that we put no limits on God. And so as he owns it all, see, and once we understand that we're only stewards over what he's given us, then we say, okay, God, what you want me to give? What is it that you want me to do? And so, and watch this, God will start working on you, start stretching you. 
It's like, whoo, you've been comfortable here. Now I want to take you further. Because as a man gives, so listen, it'll be given unto him again, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. But God says, listen, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. And then he says this, I don't want you to sow grudgingly or of necessity or under compulsion or forced to do it. It's like, you might as well keep your money for all that because your attitude ain't right. It's like me giving you a birthday gift. Here, happy birthday. It's like, you better keep your gift in. I don't want it. You got the attitude behind it. You got to be mindful. God wants us to be cheerful in our giving. A lot of times when we hear offering time, it's like, oh, Lord, okay. Um, I might have to make some life decisions real quick. Do, do I sow or do I keep this money to buy? Go ahead. You know what? This is why I want to pump faith in you because I don't want to be a thing. You sow in fear after you're giving. It's like, man, you, you might as well kept what you just sold because you sow in fear. It's like, man, that thing ain't going to grow properly. So let's go ahead and feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. So when you step out and do it, you do it with such confidence and such excitement, knowing that this is an investment. This is the greatest investment I can make is in the kingdom of God. It's better than the Dow Jones. It's better than any stock that I can ever do. As I give, God is unlimited. Watch. Oh, Lord. You can't break God. God's saying this. I can afford your dreams. <laughs> Some of y'all need to marinate on that one. I can afford your dreams. Okay. You ever been out eating with somebody and they say, it's on me, get what you want? Now, my thought is, do you really mean get what I want? <laughs> or you just trying to sound nice? Because if you tell me that, I'm going to get what I want. I've been trained. I'm not limiting God. If I train myself to receive, some people are so, some of y'all need to train yourself to receive. You're such givers. People who are really generous sometimes are really servant-oriented don't know how to receive sometimes. The hardest ones to receive. No, I'm good. I'm straight. And God trying to bless you with more than enough. Somebody treats you to lunch and say, I just want to pay for it. No, I got it. I can take care of it because you don't want to show that you can't take care of yourself. See, that's pride. You better receive it. Listen, somebody, we went out to lunch yesterday with somebody and we were just going to pay, you know. It was like, no, we got you. I'm like, hey, amen, I received it. I ain't be like, oh, no, you ain't got to do this. Listen, I'm a giver. You know how I many people we done paid for? Listen, I'm expecting good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. God promised it and I'm expecting it. You better receive. Some of y'all need to do that. And you struggling in private. No, I'm good. I'm fine. And you know you ain't just lying. And then when you leave, your, your stomach growling. They like, I don't even know I'm hungry. You better go. God trying to answer your prayer. Amen. Okay, whoever that was for, Lord Jesus. Okay. Um, oh, we, do we need to come forward at this time. Father, as, wait a minute before we do that. Father, we thank you. For the hundredfold return, we expect in your optimum yield and result as a result of the giving of your people. We give you praise that we're out of debt. All of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, y'all, you can go ahead and stand to your feet. We'll go ahead and be dismissed. We thank God. We're out of time. Certainly not out of message. Glory to God. But we'll continue. Next week, next week, we will be virtual. Uh, we will be back in person on the third Sunday. We'll be back. And the date is the 18th. I think it's the 18th. The third Sunday is the 18th. We'll be back 1230 once again. And so um, we thank God. So uh, we'll send out notices as well. And we want you to invite somebody to come. Because listen, when we get into this thing dealing with faith and faith to recover and faith to build, it's going to stir you up. It's going to stir you up, and I'm, and I'm, I'm excited for you. Because some people think that their time has passed, and God is saying it has not passed. I can still recover all. And some may say, I'm not at a place where I've lost a lot, but I need to know how to build from where I am. God said, I'm going to show you that too. It's going to be wisdom for everybody. So, Father, we bless you. We thank you as we leave this place, but not your presence. We thank you that the angels of God are encamped right about us to keep us, to protect us in all our ways. No evil plague will come down our dwelling. Nothing evil shall happen to us. We bless you and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody in agreement, say amen.
and amen. God bless you all. Go in peace. Have a good day.